Hi, my name is Dr. Dalal. I'm one of the new developmental pediatricians here at Kids Heart. One of the um, one of the kind of diagnoses I struggle with, Dr. Tahir, is the selective mutism. I feel okay. it's so difficult to treat, and I usually rely on psychiatry to uh, kind please. of um, it help me kind of manage these cases. With regards to an SSRI, is there a specific SSRI that is your go-to for selective mutism? Um, let me share with you. Um, and this is a, just a general anxiety, so I will quickly try to do the just, and I know exactly what you are asking. You know, the, all the SSRI, the first line is they are all more or less the same with the different colors. But there is a certain, uh, you know, the subtle differences and also the tolerability. As you know that the, our first line is that if there's a family history and somebody is already trying the SSRI in the family, it's better to use the same, not to try another one because it's already been tested. Because yeah. uh, some people, and in the children, actually, for the sake of time, I will not go in detail. For the children, I feel the low potency, like the Zoloft, Sertraline. Sertraline is... Uh, uh, low potency and we can have a luxury to divide into a smaller doses you know mm -hmm. so that is preferable for the children and the, remember I discussed that uh, I mentioned the case four year old I used uh, Zoloft 6.5 so we started with the 6.5 we went to the 12.5 and he, he showed the 5 uh, but then we tapered down in like uh, three four five months when he started feeling better but in SSRI wise, no, not much preference. Low potency for the younger children. Ciprolex is good, but it, uh, the Isitalopram, it is good, but it can be sometimes activating. For the OCD, they are seeing fluvoxamine. You know, fluvoxamine, uh, Luvox, fluvoxamine is really helpful. But in, in practice, I did not notice much difference in that. The okay. others are like Paxil and uh, those uh, those medications. They are a little bit causing sedation, uh -huh. and uh, but SSRIs are case by case basis. I would say. Do you feel for like the they work well mu for selective mutism? Do they work uh, SSRI, well? SSRI, yes, of course, of course, of course. They they usually work well. They usually work well. I mean, I have seen quite a few number of cases. I mean, this was the only child who was very young. I have even seen a seventeen. 18-year-old uh, uh, boy, actually, he had a selective mutism after severe trauma. And, you know, the uh, biology is not the same, but at least we have uh, some of the common symptoms in them. So this 17-year-old boy was having a severe trauma. I didn't want to go in detail, but very severe trauma and some of the, even the PTSD symptom. And he stopped even talking to the family members. And even in my session, when the family brought him, he was just sitting and staring at me. And I knew that he has a reciprocity and he was not uh, having a autism and his prior functioning was very good, high functioning kid who was uh, doing the uh, okay in the class, like average grades and so on and so forth. So he was treated with the SSRI plus the psychotherapy and he showed improvement in a couple of months, two, three months. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Thanks. Dr. You're welcome. You're welcome. Dr. I'm Dr. Abdul Latif. Uh, uh, my yeah. I'm working as a consultant psychiatrist in Abu Dhabi. Please. Oh, yeah. Uh, in UK, we use ECT, you know, in a high, high, uh, in a very limited occasion. So it's, it's, it's a treatment which is uh, the uh, reserved for uh, severe depression. And also, uh, we use it in uh, mania, severe mania. And uh, do you people use uh, ECT as a treatment for anxiety in US? Um, let me share with you, I mean, not only ECT, very, very severe, extremely severe anxiety cases, the surgery has been used. Did I surprise you? The psychosurgery, oh. the brain surgery for OCD, oh. right? For OCD. So in yeah. very, very severe cases, the ECT can be used, you know, I mean, although it's not FDA approved and, uh, but there are off-label use for this one, but we are talking about very, very severe where they failed the SSRI, of course. They failed the atypical, they failed the benzo, and it's very, very difficult. And sometimes they need a proper fall. You know that. It's just, yeah, uh, yeah, it's proper fall, yeah. Yeah. So right. those cases, but those are very, very limited cases. I don't know how many of them are the OCD cases as well. They have the anxiety on top of these very, very severe OCD, which is a life crippling. So that's why we need to mention that. But the ECT... Uh, there has been less and less use of ECT as well as in US. As you know, the TMS is uh, FDA approved 
uh, uh, treatment entity, it is very safe and uh, very helpful. It yeah. is approved for the mood disorder and for depression only, but off-label use for other uh, areas as well, for example, addiction, for the mood disorder, and so on and so forth. All right, Dr. Tahar, I think yeah, uh, we don't have any more questions. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the everybody for your time and your patience. Uh, I would love to have a feedback, please, because we want to always learn from our colleagues and uh, our associates and we want to improve ourselves. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, any comments, uh, feedback is welcome. Mm -hmm.